Hi, my name is Micheline Hess, and I'm the writer and artist of the comic Malice in Ovenland, and today I'm going to be drawing some of my characters from the world of Ovenland for you to enjoy. Typically, I'm working in a uh, digital space. Uh, I do most of my work now on my iPad. So you're going to see me a lot of times uh, for this session resisting the urge to pinch zoom and do all kinds of other stuff with this image. Right now, I'm blocking everything in because um, that's the way I wanted to do this piece. It's going to be a little birthday selfie with my characters because yesterday was my birthday and I figured, why the heck not? since they wouldn't be around without me. <laughs> Guilt trip for my characters that don't actually exist. So even when I'm working in digital, I'll use the blue just because it kind of helps my brain think a little more loosely. Um, I'm not as uh, stuck to what I'm doing. Um, I, you know, it kind of is a way of telling, telling me it's just a sketch, it's just preliminary, and this is the stage where I can kind of uh, uh, be a little more free and not have to worry about the final product of course, I can also command Z or undo what I'm doing when I'm drawing with my iPad. So that's an advantage that uh, I don't have when I'm on paper. But it's kind of nice to work on paper since the, the pencil moves and feels differently. And there's also a kind of permanence that I think comes with having things on paper, which is really nice. Um, you know, you can, I mean, of course, you can print things out that you do digitally, but I think it's just a little bit different when you're actually doing it on the paper. So I think this is far enough along that I can start inking. Um, normally what I would be doing as I work on this is I would be creating another layer and then using black digital inks over it. This is the character Lily from my comic Malice in Ovenland that I started uh, back in 2010. And um, she was created from, uh, I guess the decision I finally made to start my own comic. For a very long time, um, I had been into comics. Uh, I worked as a colorist at Milestone back when that was around. And um, I always played with the idea and people would tell me like, you should do a, you should do a comic, you should do your own comic. Uh, but I was um, often betrayed by my own sense of uh, doubt, actually. I wasn't sure what people would feel about it or if they would like it or if it would be any good. And that actually held me up for a really long time. And then finally, uh, some years later, I was working at another company and uh, you know, I, I got to a point where I didn't want to look back on my life and you know, think years down the road, I could have been a great comic artist, uh, you know. So I decided I was going to go for it and uh, just do my best and whatever happened, happened. And, you know, if it, if it doesn't turn out well, then at least I know I took a shot. And so it, it actually turned out really well. Uh, I started drawing on paper and um, I was creating uh, comics for, for kids that uh, I predominantly wanted to aim at children of color since I felt that they were underserved. Uh, demographic and I wanted to have adventures and stories for them that were fun and sometimes scary and sometimes funny but also uh, had a feeling of kind of safety to them uh, they were in a world where nothing really bad would ever happen to them and um, they could also learn things and so in the world of Malice and Ovenland uh, Lily who is the main character um, is finding herself fed up, so to speak, with her mother's uh, food choices because she's cooking a lot of healthy things from her garden. And she also, at the start of the comic, has given Lily a huge list of chores to do uh, during the summer when all of her friends are off having fun. And so while she's cleaning the oven, she actually ends up getting sucked down into it and finding herself in a subterranean world with these creatures uh, that are not very happy with her. So these creatures are called oven freets, and they have based their entire evolution and economy and everything off of the greasy dribblings that have been coming down into the oven 
from when Lily's mom used to have much less healthier fare uh, in the kitchen. And so now that her mother has changed up her diet and is cooking healthier things, uh, the grease supply is running out and they're having a hard time uh, adapting to the notion of possibly having to change and embrace um, eating more nutritious foods. So that's where she finds herself when she enters the world of Ovenland. Uh, right now I'm drawing uh, another character from Ovenland. His name is Chef Grisley, and he was uh, the Queen's royal chef before he was locked in the dungeon um, because he was accused of something that he didn't do. I don't want to give too much away. So he's a little bit of a misunderstood character in the beginning, but then they get to be friends. And this last character is another character from Ovenland. His name is Max Roach. He is a guard roach from the world of Ovenland, and they're used to guard the queen and um, generally just uh, belong to the, the the guard cast, I guess you could say, of the oven freaks that are big and tall and hulking and they're kind of bullies too. So you'll see he's close to another character, his name is Crumb, and he was kind of a downtrodden character at the beginning and he becomes friends with, uh, with Lily when she finds herself down there. I modeled uh, Lily a little bit off myself and a little bit off of uh, friends and uh, the, the kids of friends. Uh, I wanted her to be um, very approachable in terms of her, her, uh, the way she appeared and that, you know, kids could look at her and, and find something about the character that they feel resembles themselves. So in this respect, uh, she's kind of super, she's not a superhero, but she's kind of remarkable just the same, even though her, her appearance doesn't really um, show that. I kind of like the idea, uh, just because as a kid, like, my glasses were, were very thick. And, you know, you take some, some ribbing for that on occasion. Uh, so it's nice to kind of include it um, instead of just saying, well, she has contact lenses or her vision's fine. It's like, you know... No, you know, her vision kind of kind of sucks and it's okay. She's <laughs> just kind of uh, everyday looking with her requisite rag that she wears on her head because she's a uh, scarf rather because she's she was starting out wearing that when she was uh, cleaning the kitchen. So it's kind of become a bit of a trademark. One of the things I explore in the comic um, also is that Lily uh, goes through some different transitions with her hairstyles because I wanted to celebrate uh, curly kinky hair and so there's some instances when it floofs out because it's it's gotten wet and it's humid where she is and there's other times where she has it in a like a double pony puffs and then towards the end uh, she ends up in a kind of a, a gladiator style battle uh, with a very imposing and scary creature and in this in this scene she's got it in a, a whole different style so I wanted that uh, purposely because I wanted to sort of celebrate it and give kids a feeling of um, of you know taking pride in in the things about themselves uh, that I think historically like society and media hasn't always really played up or been very complimentary of. This is the Queen of Ovenland. Um, she is very large and imposing and uh, kind of having a nasty temperament, but she softens up a little bit over time. So this is actually an oil burner that she has on her head all the time. And then on top of the oil burner, there's actually a pot that's simmering. It's always simmering. And it the intensity of the simmer always matches her, her mood. So usually she's getting upset or angry about something and the, the pot will start to like boil over. One of my biggest uh, influences for the creation of Ovenland was actually a, a video game franchise that I was 
heavily addicted to for a while, um, which is the Kingsfield video game series. And uh, it was the first time I had ever played a 3D fully immersive video game on my PlayStation. And with each successive release, I think there were four. With the fourth one, it was, it was the best in my opinion. And there were just so many little caverns and catacombs and trap doors and, uh, you know, um, trolleys on tracks. And some of the tracks are broken and you fall and some of them aren't. So I spent a lot of time playing that game. So now that the, the heavier inks are down, I usually kind of go back in once more and start to tie in like the fine details, the shadow under her neck and, you know, start tweaking things a little bit. Let me fix her nose a little bit here. I think I'm almost done. Yes, ultimately, there always had to be some cross-hatching in this. It was inevitable. My name is Micheline Hess, and these are my characters from Malice in Ovenland. <laughs> 